minute, we'll ask some questions, but then we'll, you're welcome to ask questions of the artists. Um, if you can stump them, that's really extra point. Um, we are going to be moving around. Um, and so we'll start in here, but then we're going to kind of quickly go in here. Um, and then you might be kind of move with us if you want to. Uh, we'll be on a microphone. But that's why we're not putting out a whole ton of seats, because we hope you'll move with us. Great. Um, and that is uh, Cindy Stokes, who is our showrunner, <laughs> let's say. Uh, she's on the exhibition committee with Ari, who's manning the camera. Um, and uh, I haven't signed a model release, by the way, so I don't even think about putting this on social. Um, anyway, welcome. Come on in if you want. Um, so, our curator, Trisha Legasso Goldberg, isn't here right now, but she, I don't think so, right? No. Uh, but she, um, Looked at our work and Babsy the Barry Photographers Collective is a, um, a nonprofit collective of photographers. And we've been together about 21 years. And uh, we put on shows at least once a year in, in the Bay Area. It's our first time in Marin that I know of. And uh, we got hooked up with this group called Samurai Photo, and uh, they're from Yokohama, Japan. So you're seeing um, some of their work here. We were um, kind of honored and pleased to host them uh, here for the opening reception a couple weeks ago. They had uh, hosted us in Yokohama in 2018, um, and it was before I joined Babsy, but you guys were at that show, right? Yes. And you know, it's an honor to be able to host them again. We're really thrilled about their work. Um, so just a brief word about um, Memento Mori and Memento Vivere. Uh, it, it's remember, it's Latin for remember you must die, right? And remember you must live is Memento Vivere. So there was a whole life cycle theme to the show. And um, you'll see that expressed in different ways. Um, was the, in, so Cindy, was the, the idea was to make the show kind of like a life cycle. Yes, yes. In terms yeah. of? Yeah, somewhat loosely, Trisha arranged the work from that end to this end, more the beginning of life through midlife, and then um, succeeding towards decay at end of life, although that's quite loose, and you may have interpreted some of the pieces a little differently yourself, but, but that's a, um, everybody gets to read it. Um, so, with that, I think we'll just move ahead, and um, I want to introduce you to Mitch Nels, who is the, hey Mitch, uh, Mitch is the president of the <coughs> How are you doing? Oh, welcome everybody. I'm also the membership chair, so we're always a community member. <laughs> I'm putting the plug for that. And Mitch sets the bar high. Um, so Mitch, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions. You want to point out your work, it's right here. These four images are mine. Um, it's, does all this come from a series or several series? Like, can you tell us a bit about your work? Sure. These are from Bean Hollow State Park in the San Mateo Coast, about a, a mile, mile south of Pescadero. It's a place I go to on a regular basis, different times of day, different seasons of the year. There's always something. And I was just struck by the weathering to varying degrees of the rocks there. To me, it fit in with the theme of the show. Um, of life and death. This is an ongoing cycle. In the end, it all ends up as sand, but at various stages in the cycle, you'll see more or less uh, ability to differentiate with the rock patterns. Um, so, um, how does your work fit in with the theme? I think just looking at the cycle of, of erosion here, which is a, a not even a chemical process, it's a geological process. The rocks are created over time by just wind and, and soil water and erosion. But to me, it's a cycle of natural life as these begin to degrade over the centuries. Cool. And um, now, did you spend like a lot of time at the coast, like during, did you shoot for this show or was this something you did during COVID or like when did all this happen? That's a great question. No, I didn't shoot specifically for the show. I've been going 
um, down to this area for my house in Half Moon Bay for probably 15 years once I moved out to the, to the West Coast. So I, I already amassed a body of images from this, this site and it just turned out I, that it, it fit in very nicely with our theme. So it's just luck and saved me a lot of time and effort to go out shooting. <laughs> Yeah, um, anything else you want to add about like the show theme or? No, I, I think uh, everybody should be proud of the work that's here. I think as, as I've, I've been with the collective for about five or six years, I would say of those years, this is the best show we've ever put on. So I think to my colleagues in Bassett, we should be very proud of the work we did tonight. Okay. Cool. Uh, does anybody want to ask Mitch anything in particular? Or if not, we'll, we'll move ahead. Thank you very much, Mitch. I have a... Oh, oh um, sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, oh. Go ahead. Go. no, no, you go first. The black and white. I just wonder about the black and white prints. Are they neg from negatives or are they... Yeah, they're all digital. Shot mostly with a black and white specific camera. Um, I do a lot of my work is in black and white. Can you tell us how it feels or what your ideas are behind including black and white and color that they, they have a, a different to me like a very different emotional tone to be honest i wasn't sure it was going to work uh -huh. <laughs> but i figured i'd give it a try mm -hmm. uh, yeah you know, i mostly shoot in black and white but some of these really i did better in color and i started to notice that so i, I gave it a try right. um so we're going to move over to cindy's work which is in here a bit, and it's a lot easier to see if you get up directly. <laughs> Sorry about that. So you kind of need to be can you like grab the camera there, while we do my here. area. It's this work in this elbow. We'll go next to my. So, um, Cindy, tell, tell us about this, uh, tell us about your work and about the. Uh, the project. Uh, yeah, so um, as Rusty said, I'm Cindy Stokes, and um, I, the work is not the stuff that's behind here. It's these floating uh, three-dimensional pieces hung in the alcove, and um, most of them have photographs printed on the paper and are then shaped. It's a couple of them I just left white. And um, this group of work I call Experimental Life, and um, the project is about um, the fact, for, for this exhibit, uh, is, is about the idea that life has really been evolving since it arose in the first place, and it continues to evolve. And so all the ones that are printed um, with images, um, these are images of various um, plants, or um, in, this, in the case of this one, for instance, it's um, burned wood. Um, so plants of various sorts, and then I've um, highly crumpled the paper and reshaped it into new forms as if life is continuing to evolve um, forward and past us. Um, and I've been working on making three-dimensional forms from either plain paper or photographic prints for about four years, and I've kind of finally figured out how to do it and make them stable and, and be able to hang them in ways that are... Um, presentable to an audience and within the gallery. Can you speak to, uh, just uh, not to get too detailed, but just a little bit about these papers that you're using? Because I yeah. think people may be curious about that. You go ahead. Yeah, yeah. so um, it, it, like I said, it took me several years to figure out how to, um, what kinds of paper and so forth. These are all several different forms of Japanese washi, which is a paper. Um, they're different forms of kojo, and they're different weights. So some of them are very, very lightweight. They almost float on air. If any of you are in the paper world, they're like down to nine grams per square meter, and as much as, I think, 50 grams per square meter. Um, and so they're quite lightweight papers. I crumple them linearly. They're very, they're flat when they start, just like any piece of paper. And just so you know, this started out like as a meter squared. And um, this, uh, like, what's one of these smaller ones might have been about 15 by 15 inches to start with. And then I highly crumple them and shape them with the creases across um, the crumples. And, um, and then I tack them in various strategic places with thread so that they hold the 3D shape that I eventually um, shape them into. So that's the process. And I can create an infinite number of um, variations. 
Um, well, Cindy, uh, again, was a showrunner here, and so she set this up, and I, I, I guess I, I want to ask you as well about your, your thoughts about um, how this sort of theme came together, and I, I don't want you know, yeah, you have to give a no, short, no. short yeah. answer, how this theme came together, and then also what it was like getting the, our Japanese friends involved in the yeah. project. Yeah, since I'm speaking, this is a great time to do that, Rusty. Um, yeah, so by saying I was the showrunner, I was the main organizer from the artist side. Um, we have two uh, collectives, the Bay Area Photo Collective and then Samurai Photo. They brought over um, nine people in person, um, including the Ikebana artist whose work you see here, which they frequently collaborate with, so I hope you'll take a look at that. There's also an installation um, a single base installation she made over there that was made two weeks ago and it's being allowed to die over time, sort of fits with the theme of the show. And um, at any way, it was really wonderful having them here, but it was quite an organizational feat. And then we, I worked with the curator, Trisha Lagasso Goldberg, who came up with the theme. She took into account this venue, being in the midst of the gardens and always, we have the cycle of life every year um, at every moment in time. And then she also took into account our um, the members photography because uh, before we even submitted the work for this show because of course she had to create a theme that could work for this the two collectives bodies of work so we have something to show <laughs> and towards that theme and I think it's fit very well um, in both instances and it was a pleasure to work with both her and everybody in the collectives okay awesome um, thank you we're gonna move on to Ari Ari uh, please tell us about your your project and this is and how you and how you sort of arrived at this type of, of installation or why that's suit, well suited for this. Yeah, so I started uh, documenting these marks that tell us to stand six feet apart. It came out when the COVID pandemic started. I was documenting all kinds of changes uh, in in my neighborhood from COVID that blocked up storefronts and these kind of things and then I ended up just focusing on these marks and I found that by focusing and getting really close to them uh, this level of abstraction uh, opened up all these metaphorical ideas about the pandemic about the marks how they control us how our lives changed in so many different ways and um, I've been uh, documenting these for a while I, I published this scene about a year and a half ago which was sort of my first uh, version of uh, presenting this and there's all these grids that show um, sometimes a whole bunch of, of these uh, images together. And I've uh, pre presented them a variety of ways. And then for this show, uh, partly because the, the theme being Memento Mori, I wanted to touch on the, the sad part of the pandemic that many people died. So the name of this is Memorial. And I've taken the X-shaped, six feet apart marks and I've turned them into these concrete sculptures. Partly because many of them are on concrete and I wanted to, to kind of feel like I had cut them out of concrete and gathered them together as part of this, this archiving of this time, this collective time that we all went through. And also because the X-shapes kind of look like crosses, what kind of look like, makes it look like a, a, a gravestones. Um, I also did this, um, you know, this is another type of mark that was common to have two feet. Um, you know, this one, you can see some of them have Japanese text. Um, my wife is Japanese, which is why I originally, one of the reasons I originally connected with this Japanese group. Um, so I put these feet marks around here and I wanted to create a space that kind of felt like a ritual space. like almost like, like a Stonehenge or like a mandala or something like that to just have all these different ways so it could feel like um, something that's a memorial to, to people who died in, in COVID. So uh, let me pop in here with a question. Uh, I'll take just to take this a slightly different direction because I think you do know the Japanese group really well. Uh, is there anything about, you know, how they've approached the show and what they contributed that really stands out to you. Is there some, some, I mean, it's all nature, it's a lot of nature that we're seeing, obviously. But do you, is there anything that you can sort of comment on about their approach or what you've seen or anything that you particularly like, you think you want to highlight? Um, well, I love how the Samurai Photo Group, um, a lot of them are finding ways to incorporate traditional Japanese 
themes and materials in new modern ways. Um, and you know, photography, of course, is a relatively new thing compared to uh, you know, like the, the, the screens out there that have gold leaf on them that are in the middle of the space is a great example. It's a, it's a traditional Japanese screen that would be used in a traditional architecture or for a, a tea ceremony. <clears throat> and they're actually covered with gold leaf. And then in this case, the artist worked with a commercial signage printer that has white ink in it. And so it's printed directly on the gold leaf. <clears throat> so he's taken a, a traditional theme of the cherry blossoms and he's produced them photographically. He's manipulated them and you know deleted the background and then at a glance they kind of look like they can be really traditional. And he worked with a, a, um, a craftsman, the last group of craftsmen in Tokyo anyway, who make these traditional screens. So, and then a number of other artists also work with the handmade papers and incorporate these traditional themes, including the collage photograph that's hanging in with the Gabbana, that's some famous Japanese prints that they've then recreated. You can see some of the original, and they recreated the shapes of the prints using their own group photograph. So, anyway, the new, a little bit of new, a little bit old. Awesome, thank you. Um, John Martin? Hey, I would love to show your work. So John has a couple of pieces in here, uh, in the corner. Um, and then John also has some work on the other side. So we're going to go to John now. We're going to go to John later. Yeah, yeah. Double John. So um, tell us about your this part of your project. And yeah, this, uh, this one here was the, uh, this was the, uh, what was interesting is this is the end of the show. So. This is the memento mori part. You know, remember that you must die. So, um, what I've been doing a series of country graveyards. Uh, I like um, these graveyards, but what I particularly am interested in is the forgotten graves. Uh, I've looked around these graveyards for the uh, artifacts that people leave. And I'm fascinated by what happens. I look at graveyards and I look at that stuff and I realize that when somebody dies, you know, their loved ones and friends, they leave things for them, you know. But then, you know, they themselves, they leave, you know, they either they move away or they themselves die. So that brings you back to the theme of the show here. So that uh, they're going to go at some point or another. So once the, the people are gone, nobody can care for their graves anymore. And then nature takes over. So I go back to these graveyards and say, uh, continuing the project, I'd like to see what nature is going to do. Nature basically is caring, taking over and caring for these projects. And here, I like, I, I was attracted to the Buddha statue because you know, I'm a Buddhist and there's uh, the practice we talk a lot about impermanence. You know, nothing nothing lasts forever. So, you know, you're gonna die. So that's part of you know impermanence. Everything changes, mountains, trees, everything. So anyway, same thing here, the plant. I don't know, somebody put that there. Could have been there for a year or two years, but they're they're long gone. Nobody's taking care of this anymore. All these different people. And yet there's a beauty to it. Well there is. There is the beauty. That's what I'm trying to capture that. Can you speak into the mic? Awesome. Yeah. So um, uh, I forgot to ask if anybody had questions for Ari and um, or Cindy, or uh, John, I guess now would be a really good time uh, to ask. Does anyone have any questions for them? Okay. Um, anything else you want to add, John? Um, no, that, that's about Because we're going to hear from you again. Yeah. In just a the other part is at the beginning of the show, and that's uh, the memento varies. So. Okay. 
Um, that'll be good to end on a lighter note. I know. Like, <laughs> you know what? I think the most Remember, you know, must live. Yeah. So I'm sure about that. Okay. Um, so uh, Ingo's work is right through here. So we're going to come right down this ramp, and then we're going to go to the right. Um, so let's. From I'll also point out that one of his pieces is back here in the corner to the right, oh. the back wall, and one of them is also up there, but we're going to speak with him in front of the two that are on the ring. Right. Thank you. Um, so, um, please tell us about your, uh, your project and your um, work and how this kind of fits in with the theme. Yeah, uh, my images are from the series uh, Melancholic, which I put together during the lockdowns. Um, many of the images were actually taken during that time. Some were reprocessed to basically have this melancholic atmosphere and feeling um, be pronounced. Um, these are maybe the most typical because they are from the coast. Um, I walk along the coast very, very often and just have my camera with me and kind of what you see these are after or during storms. Um, so the time is basically what we just had last night, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it. Um, well, about so, um, so is there a... Uh, Kind of a, a life cycle to what you see on the on the uh, on the coast as you're as you're walking around. Uh, less of the cycle. Um, the, the images, at least many of the images, the structure more pronounced. Um, very often the color can be spread uh, from the and, and also this topic. Just I, I thought this this is basically needs to be in that one. Well. Um, but I also do color images. Uh, I do regularly calendars, and if I ask my wife, black and white is not a photograph. And are these are these really moody calendars? No, they, they are you know more on the nice side. I love feedback. Can you not make uh, more colorful uh, images? You know, <laughs> on the calendar. Got to got to listen to your audience. So okay, awesome. Uh, any other? Any questions for Ingo or any other? All right, we're going to move on over here. Uh, Chris? Yep. <laughs> Chris is, can you grab a camera for Chris? There you go. Uh, thank you for coming around with us here. Chris has got your own puppy. Yeah, I do. This is nice. the rest corner. Um, this is Chris Sims You, uh, relatively new member. Yeah, pretty new. First since yeah. uh, August. Uh, Ingo also fairly new. Um, so please tell us about your your project and uh, and and how you feel and how it relates to the theme and all that. Good stuff. Um, yeah, these images are from a series. Um, I do kind of a broad range of uh, genres of photography. I am a wildlife photographer. I also do a lot of street photography. Um, landscapes, so I kind of was looking for something that kind of fit all those things for me. Uh, this series is called City Angels and um, kind of focuses on the interplay of uh, birds in the urban environments. And with the theme being somewhat of a juxtaposition, yin yang kind of thing with life and death, I feel like uh, it kind of plays to that a little bit. The, the birds representing that, you know, nature part and the, the structure around them kind of representing what we do to the world, which can be beautiful and not um, at the same time. So, yeah. Cool. And then um, uh, any other thoughts about the overall show theme or other work that you've, you've seen here? Has it left an impression on you? Is there anything? Comment on, regard to that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, what a great show to be my first show to be part of. You know, to, to get to collaborate with the Japanese um, group who were here when we did our opening. Um, so we got to do a potluck with them and get to know them, do a little print exchange. So that part's been really, really wonderful. And I'm kind of 
kind of inspired by everything. I can't even pick a favorite. Um, I love the, as um, I think it was talked about earlier, the, the process that a lot of the Japanese artists you know, use in their printing, the papers, the way they hang it, um, and just the, I think those, the ones that the um, Miki, I think, did, um, or the, the circles and the lines through them. Mariko. Oh, but, huh? Mariko. Mariko. Um, <coughs> those ones really, I think, out of everything, drew me in because of the unique element of it, and very graphic, and, and kind of the juxtapositioning that she, she has with us. Cool. Any uh, questions for Chris? Melissa, you want to step in with some questions? <laughs> no, you don't have to. I don't mean to put you on the spot. I was just going to turn. Uh, uh oh, I think I'm up next. Uh, that's scary. I get to become the MC. Uh oh. Yeah. Um, I'm going to actually point out Melissa Kieser, who is um, she's the, heart, the director at the Harvey Milk Photo Center, and we hold our monthly peer review meetings there. So we appreciate the support that we get from you guys and having a collaboration. Thank you for coming today. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> and you can ask questions too. Um, and before I forget, because I've had a couple people ask me already today if the work is for sale, and I want to say yes, it is. And if there's something that you want to buy or want to know a price of, um, Annie at the front desk is the person to see. She has a price list, and um, see her. And there's also the catalogs um, that you can get for twenty dollars that give that give photographs of um, just about everything in the show, and she will take care of you on that as well. So that's my um, blatant capitalism to put in there, and we'll finish on an artistic note instead. Um, so Rusty, these are your works, and <laughs> they are. So can you tell us something about them, and if they come from a series that you're working on in that series? Great. Uh, this, is, uh, this is work from a, a series I did recently called Unnatural World. And the theme of it is about how man impedes nature. And uh, it was uh, it was deemed to be like the most appropriate work that I have for this particular show. And I've been working on portraiture, uh, kind of a community project in San Francisco. Uh, but this, um, you know, isn't about necessarily life or death in a direct sense, but it indirectly deals with how we're interfering with nature and in, in a myriad ways. And, I, and the, the series kind of looks at it uh, in a variety of ways. It's, it's all sort of conceptual, but uh, there's somewhere, like, it's direct, where right? it's toxicity in the environment, or it's man turning nature. And these particular ones that are, that are really kind of conceptual, it's, you know, the idea of, like, we would just build something uh, some weird structure obscuring a beautiful view, in this case, of Death Valley. And here uh, I was with, I was in Capitol Reef with some friends who happened to be here. And, uh, and I thought about how this beautiful rock might have been obscured by an abandoned vehicle. That just wouldn't surprise us to see that. It might surprise you to see it in a national park, but it, wouldn't necessarily surprise you to see it somewhere in nature. Um, and so that's kind of the themes that I was getting at. Um, so, oh. uh, And since yours aren't um, like all the direct single image photographs, can you say a little bit about the how of your um, process that you create, how you created these um, works? Because they're clearly not just straight. Really? <laughs> uh, yeah, so thank you. Uh, good question. So it's it's digital collage, and I consider it a form of storytelling. Um, and so I will combine different elements, whether it's, uh, you know, it's, it's it might be a, a, a relatively conventional landscape shot with, um, you know, some urban textures, uh, which is kind of central to my work, and then other types of textures you might encounter um, in an urban environment. Um, so I've been combining these in my work now for about four years, and uh, this was uh, <clears throat> my version that was outside of cityscapes. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a project I did for about a year, and uh, I, I, I return. I'm still doing a bit of it, 
uh, when I have an opportunity, when I'm traveling. Uh, I, in this case, I went to uh, a number of national parks, like the Sierras, I went to, you know, I was in Utah, I was in Iceland, and a lot of the shots take place there, um, even in Italy recently. I looked up. Hey, does anyone have any questions for Rusty? When you use the word collage, when you use the word collage, I, I know of collage in terms of cutting paper and putting things together, but I'm not quite sure I understand fully what collage and photography is. Well, it's, um, you know, it's, it's really just the digital version of it, so you're layering different okay. photos together. so you print something and then you print something on top of it. Yeah, it's not necessarily done with printing, it's done digitally, Digital. right? So you okay. use like Photoshop okay. to layer things. Okay. The layers are Yeah, no, yeah. So um, this was something I started <coughs> messing around with during that first winter of COVID. I had all this time on my hands. I said, yeah, I always wanted to learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. um, so I just took that. Did you ever work with multiple exposures to try to get the same effect? Like yeah, I mean, back in the day. Right, and film. Sure, I haven't been using film for like <laughs> 10 years. Right. So, um, and then we want to go see. Oh, that's right. We want to go see John's work. At the very end. At the yes. very end. So near the door, but don't all leave. Yeah. yeah, okay. We're good. So if you don't mind, we're going to come down here and talk to see John's other work. Thank you for, uh, for checking this out. Thank you.